Howdy, y'all. Today, we are looking at the best battle line in Seraphon, Skinks. <laughs> maybe not the best, maybe my friends would say the most annoying battle line unit in Seraphon. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to look at them. What happened to them in the last battle tome? Have they changed? What do we do with them now? And uh, what do they look like? What, what's, a, what's a list of Skinks look like? Um, if you're like me, this is what everybody would have thought our our armies look like in the last battle tome. Just drowned them in skinks, skinks, skinks everywhere, and uh, that's kind of what it was. Because we had the weary fighter, we had lots of teleports, we were summoning skinks in like crazy. So if you're like me, uh, you probably have quite a few skinks. There's there's my collection of skinks. I have over a hundred, as I'm sure you do. Also, um, if you've been playing Seraphim very long. So what do we do with all those skinks we have? They are going to be a little bit different role than they used to be. Used to, you would just take them in units of 10, flood the board, cause headaches, cause problems, and win the game off objectives. They weren't ever going to cause any damage, and that was just fine. They were there to be killed. Now, I think we can, we can play them a little bit differently. So let's look at their war scroll. Their new war scroll they got. Um, one of the we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to the abilities here in a second. Let's look at the the move is eight wounds one save six bravery five. Okay, so the only thing that really changed there was our bravery. Bravery got a lot worse um, in Starborn. It goes back up to ten, so that goes back up to normal. But in Coalesce, if you're bringing Skinks, you're gonna have to worry about bravery now because it's at five. We still have the Javelins, 8-inch range, 1 attack, 5s and 4s, no rend. Bolt Spitters, 16-inch range, 1 attack, 5s and 5s, no rend. And we have a couple melee weapons, the Dagger, uh, 1 attack, 5s and 5s, no rend, 1 damage. And the Club, 4s uh, and 4s, no rend, 1 damage. And so you have some options here of how you can kit out your Skinks. Between the Javelins, uh, you can also take the... the Basically, the shield and the dagger. The shield and the dagger come together um, when you use them, unless you're using the club and the shield. Um, if you're like me, if you look at this picture, I think all just about all mine, I may have 10 that aren't, aren't uh, bolt splitters and shields. So just about all of mine are the bolt splitters and shields because that's what you ran in the last battle tome. And so that's how most of mine are equipped. And I think that's still viable. The javelins at only eight inch range are really hard to get a lot of use out of. They have a little bit better wound, but it's not really enough of a difference for me to justify losing half the range of that missile attack. So luckily I don't have any in javelins and I probably won't ever be building any in javelins. If you're teleporting these guys in Starborn, they're not going to be in range, so you're not going to get any use out of them. Um, there might be a list where you could build um, like heavy melee skinks where they take that instead of the shield. Um, but I think you get more use out of the bolt splitters, bolt spitters than you do the javelins. Um, the, the melee weapons, you, ha you have the dagger if you go with the shield. Um, all mine are kitted with the shield because if you look under their special abilities, that's, uh, the star buckler adds one to their save rolls. So now they're going to have a, a five-up save when they have the shields, which is pretty nice for little skinks. Um, so you, you can, especially when you're taking them in hordes and they have a five-up save. So I have all mine with shields. I'm going to leave them that way. Um, another special ability, Swarming Cohort. Add one to the attacks characteristics of the weapons used by this unit while it has 15 or more models. So this is kind of nice. This incentivizes us to take hordes of these skinks instead of a minimum unit size. And so now, as long as you have more than 15 or 15 or more, you'll get extra attacks. Notice here, it doesn't say melee or missile. So it actually works in both. So keep that in mind as, you know, somebody charges these guys or they get into combat or for some reason you send them into combat, they have um, double the attacks also in combat as well as, as ranged. So um, on the surface, War Scroll isn't all that good. Here, here's a, I got a comparison table here between the Bolt Spitters at 16 inches and Javelins at 8. And with no other special stuff on here, 
Uh, you can see a unit of 40 with double the attacks. They're not actually really putting out that much damage. Uh, they're only doing uh, four for the bolt splitters and six and a half for the javelin. So, so you're increasing it a little bit. Uh, two damage. To me, that's not worth the trade-off on range. Um, it's also not a particularly impressive stat line here. With 80 dice, you know, between 40 skinks, they're going to be shooting 80 dice, but when they're hitting on fives and fives for those bolt splitter, bolt spitters, uh, you're not going to be putting out too much damage, especially when they when they don't have any rend. So, what can we do to increase that? I think you've got to get used to two small support heroes that are going to be in every single skink list, and that is the skink star priest and the skink priest. These guys, I love these guys. Uh, they are fantastic in this army. They, the Skink Star Priest is almost in every single list I create because his staff, which do, which adds an ability, it's automatic, sixes to wound to an extra mortal. And so this is, is great for any unit that has a lot of attacks, a high quantity but low quality. This Star Priest is perfect for that because he'll add mortals to something that you know, you don't have Ren to it, so it doesn't have much of a punch, but here we have a little bit more added to it. He also gives us a 5-up extra command point in our hero phase. And he has access to the Skink Spell Lore, which I think one of the best spells there is Hand of Glory. It uh, lets you reroll ones to hit, so it's basically the command point. And so it's a, it's a great way to make sure you have the reroll ones on these Skinks. If you fail the spell, just spend the command point. <laughs> Uh, but I like that spell. They also have another spell that I, I end up taking a lot on the Scar, Star Priest, and I'm sure we'll talk about Star Priest in, in a, their own video later. But the Tide of Serpents is a great one too if you if you need to kill off some hordes. Uh, so Skink Star Priest is great. He he gives us some mortal damage on those 80 dice that we're rolling for those Skinks. We get a chance to do some some mortals, which is nice. Skink Priest. This guy is only 70 points. Now he's super frail. He's super weak. He'll get sniped or mortaled off the table real easy, but he is incredibly worth it. Uh, his staff, it, it takes a three up to, to grant the ability, and you have to have a unit wholly within 12, but it gives him run and shoot, run and charge, and plus one to save. Whew. I mean, that's, that's three abilities right there that are amazing on their own, but on a, just on a three up roll, fantastic. There's no real way to um, to buff to like buff that roll or grant re rolls. Um, a lot of armies on their priests, they, there's ways to to get re rolls or pluses to that to that prayer. Nothing in our in in our army. So if you really really are counting it on it, you should take two of them. <laughs> um, his command ability is also amazing. Plus one to hit, and so use that command ability on those skinks. You're gonna you're gonna have lots of command points in this army anyway. Uh, so that command ability is is fantastic, plus one to hit. So now, if we look back at the the uh, skink profile, they're moving eight, but we're gonna add a run and still shoot. So we're up to 14 now. If you want the constellation, you can turn the constellation on so they get plus one to run. So they're they're at a range of uh, 15, and their bolt spitters are hitting 16 inches. So you've got plenty of range on, on the board. Um, with that plus one to hit, they're hitting on fours and fives with sixes doing mortals. And so you're getting um, 80 dice on a four up to hit. So you should get 40 through. And so you're going to have 40 dice rolling for those sixes for mortals. And uh, that's really what you're looking for. You'll, you'll still get some fives and, and you'll, you'll cause some save rolls with no rend. So you'll get some through that way. But those mortals is really what the juicy part of, of taking these two guys is. So in every blob of skinks I take, I'm taking these two guys. These two guys are an auto-include with a horde of skinks, in my opinion. So let's look at uh, what um, we're buffing them up to now. So 40 skinks with bolt spitters, two attacks each, since they're uh, over 15 models. Plus one to hit from the priest, run and shoot from the priest, six is to wound, do extra mortal from the star priest, and we're rerolling ones from hand to glory spell or from a command point. So these guys have a 31 to 34 effective range, threat range. Um, if they're in Fangs of Sotek, they do get that plus three. So they have the base eight move, six run and shoot, plus one to run and charge from Constellation if they need it, and they have a 16 inch shot. 
So if you know the standard deployments are 18 away from each other or 24, most of them are 24. So 31 to 34 inches, you're going to hit at minimum their front line. Usually that's enough to hit the support heroes in the back or their important units that they're trying to screen. So 31 to 34 inches threat range on turn one is, is pretty awesome. Uh, their average damage here is, is we're looking at 15 damage for a four up save now. So with those two little heroes and one command point spent, um, if, if, uh, from the, from the priest, we're going from four damage up to 15. So that is, that is beautiful. That, that will, that will scare some people there. Even if they've got a nice, uh, tanky hero with a three up save, you're still deleting 12. Um, and the fantastic thing is, in Fangs of Sotek, if they charge your horde, you get to shoot. So now they, <laughs> they're going to try to charge you, and they're going to take 15 damage on the charge. So uh, Fangs of Sotek with a horde of skinks is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Uh, let's look at, at the Arps some army buildup here. So we have two battalions that the skinks can fit into. Uh, the first one is Shadow Strike Temple Host. This goes into Coalesce, and you can fit two units of Skinks in there, um, along with one of those heroes, and then a unit of Pterodons or Ripperdactyl Riders. You've probably got some Pterodons or Ripperdactyl Riders laying around from previous book. Throw them in here if you need to. Um, this one, in your hero phase, pick one enemy unit that's visible to the Star Priest and Priest, and add one to hit rolls for attacks made from this battalion that target that unit. This is pretty awesome. I really, really wish... <sighs> I think I've said this before in my previous uh, videos, that these battalions were switched for the factions. This one in um, Fangs of Sotek and Starborn would be awesome because they've already got enough movement to get their turn one. Um, but now we're adding one, so they're hitting on threes. And <laughs> that would be sweet. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This one's in Koala. So it will give you an extra plus one to hit. Uh, you've still got movement in Coalesce if you're wanting to bring a blob of these guys. Um, I think they're good enough without this battalion. The battalion's a little expensive, but it's worth it's worth playing if if you want the alpha strike of these skinks and and have some pterodons or ripperdactyls you want you want to kind of work into. Great battalion for that. Um, the one for Starborn. I don't like this one as much. Same requirements for the units, but instead of setting up a unit from this battalion on the battlefield, you can place it to one side and say that it's waiting in the stars as a reserve unit. At the end of any movement phases, you can set those units up more than nine inches away from enemy units. So this is basically your old Shadow Strike, but way worse. Um, as you've seen with most of our battalions, they basically took all the buffs and split them up into the two sub-factions. Um, this one is, is not good for a skink list. You might could work something with the pterodons and reprodactyl riders, but you, you've got to really work on your buffs on this thing. And I, I don't, I don't see this battalion used very often. Um, the problem with the skinks is if you're if you're setting these guys up off the board, you're they're not in your hero phase to get all these buffs that we were just talking about. So even if you're dropping down forty, they're only going to cause the four damage. It's not worth it. And so I don't think that battalion is is worth taking. Um. Uh, I wanted to look at a couple different builds, so a couple different ideas. I think you have an idea here. You could use Skinks as a melee unit. That sounds kind of weird, but if you take Bolt Spitters and Clubs, you actually have a way to buff these guys up in melee that's that's pretty cool. So all those same buffs we were talking about, but add in a Stegodon with Skink Chief. And now he can add plus one to melee attacks. So they already get their two extra or there are two attacks for each profile from having 15 or more models now they get plus one to their melee attacks from stegonauts so if you take the clubs they'd have three attacks each now these guys are on 25 mil basis so you can fit in quite a few and when you're getting three attacks each we're plus one to attack from the skink priest or hit and so we have um 120 potential dice you're not gonna get all 40 in on threes and fours and you're still causing sixes on mortals uh so here's a here's a damage table we're assuming we can get 20 in they can fight two rows back so let's assume we can get 20 in and they're causing 19 in melee combat and so if you've attacked already with your bolt spitters and done 15 damage and then you charge and you get another 19 damage 
What? We're doing almost 40 damage with skinks? What is this? This is, I mean, hey. Now, I'm not going to take off my shields and put on clubs. Because if you've built skinks before, you know, you have to clip off the clubs to put on the shields. So, uh, I'm not going to be running this. Um, just because I don't want to have to re redo all my skinks. But if you're building skinks new, this is an option. Now, you lose the extra save to your skinks. So, they're becoming a lot more fragile. Um, they're going to have that 6-up save instead of a 5-up. So, take that into consideration. Do you want to send these guys into combat? And if so, they can do some damage. But you got to worry about their saves. Um, speaking of which, let's take it the other route. Let's see what skinks can do. We're going to make skinks incredibly tanky. <laughs> what? Yeah. Here we go. 40 skinks with shields at a 3-up save. <laughs> now, this would be awesome in Coalesced. So here we get we get a plus one to save from our priest, and we get a plus one to save from a skink starseer. It's a spell he's got. So put these in Coalesced, and these guys are tankier than... Uh, I mean, these guys are incredibly tanky. They're cheap. So, you know, pound for pound, these guys are better than guard, better than, uh, than warriors, um, probably. Because you don't have to t worry about as many uh, uh, buffs, and they're a little, they're faster and and a little bit more reliable there. But forty skinks with a three up save just from these two heroes might not be bad to take those and anchor a, a, an objective or something. So, so it'll surprise somebody when they when they charge into your skinks and you're like uh, three up to roll, three up to save. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> just an idea. So we have, I think we have three distinct builds we can we can put these guys in. We can put it with uh, these two heroes for our shooting alpha strike attacks. We can take it with the skink chief on Stegadon if we want to throw them into melee, do some damage in melee. Or if we just want to tank, we can take these skinks and tank like crazy. Uh, so very versatile unit. Uh, you may be looking at your opponent and they're, you know, they see that you got 40 skinks. They may not know how you're going to play these things. So that's kind of nice. Uh, I wrote up one list here. Let's look at an idea for a list. This is in Fangs of Sotek. And I wanted in this list to just focus on two giant blobs of skinks. So we're, we're bringing 240 blocks and we'll look at what we have to support them. Lord Croak, of course, because uh, he's amazing. He's. Um, I think he's well worth the extra points from the slon. I'm taking stellar tempest just to kind of deal with hordes, but he's really he's there to do the long range comment and to generate my command points for me. I'm taking two skink priests and two star priests each, so I'm going to have one in each of the 40 blocks of skinks. Um, so the each skink star priest gives me another chance for um, command points. So already I've got five chances for command points. My source, Astral of Bear, he's there to help buff Croak. But also, I wanted a, a source general because he gets that command trait, Old and Grizzled, which on a 3-up gives me another command trait. So now I've got six options for command traits as well as the normal one you always get. He He's going to take the Artifact Serpent God Dagger just because you have to take that one. Um, it would be hilarious if he gets in combat and just outright slays some model. So that artifact is is kind of funny. Um, I don't know how, how useful it is, but eh, we got to throw it on somebody. And then two blocks of skinks and a minimum block of ten. I'm going to take five Saurus Guard to just help keep Croak alive. And then two max units of Salamanders. And Balewind Vortex just to help buff um, Croak. When he gets where he needs to go, he can pop that and have a bigger AoE for his, for his spammable comment. Um, so that's uh, exactly 2,000. We got 165 wounds. And so um, I, I kind of like this. The weakness of this list is if you get alpha striked hard, uh, you, don't ha you don't have any command points to um, fire off your skink hordes. And you might lose some in battle shock. So that's the downside of this. Um, upside is, I think it's a pretty awesome list. So uh, let's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up tabletop. Uh, simulator. Let's look at what this looks like in deployment. 
All right, let's see what we see. All right, we got we got our uh, deployment here, and we've facing off against some trolls. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing here is is we're assuming we won the roll off for our realm shaper engine. I really hope they change that rule at some point. Uh, maybe maybe in the GHB 2020 or something. I, I, who knows? Uh, we're gonna assume we won that. And I'm gonna line up my my skink hordes here right here on the line because I know I can hit whatever he puts on the line or further back turn one. Um, I'm gonna put some salamanders up so I can I can I can get them up as, as far as possible. They're really gonna be my counter attack here. They don't have quite enough range to get their turn one if you're on 24. If you're on 18, they can. Um, but I'm going to use probably the other Salamanders as my teleport target. So, you know, you can teleport those guys in behind or in in front, wherever you need to. But these uh, these skinks here on the line, they've got they've got plenty of, of distance. So when we're looking at deployment here, uh, you know, that, that's all. That's, it's 24 inches of the next line. What do we say? 31 to 34. So they can almost hit the back of the board. But even if they're uh, lined up pretty close, I mean, the ones in the back have plenty of range to hit even what's being screened behind them. And so you've, you, you've got a lot of board control with those skinks. If uh, you have to go first, you can hit their targets, and you're still going to be 16 inches back from them to where <laughs> these, trolls, these trolls may not even reach you. <laughs> so, uh, now trolls aren't exactly the meta, but I love the trolls, so... Um, but you do want, you know, your skink star priest and your skink priest on each blob. They are, they do have an op, they do have a chance of outrunning these guys. Your, your skink star priest and your skink priest will keep up with them unless you, you're rolling real hot on your rolls or auto roll into the six. Then they may not if they, if they're rolling low. Uh, you can always pop the well, skink star priest in the realm shaper engine if you need to. Um, that's why I put them over here in the corner. But I think that's kind of what a, a nice deployment might look like. You got your croak back here with the guard protecting him, and your astrolith bear right there is kind of back up. And you'll be trying to summon in, you know, probably turn two, unless you roll really hot turn one, some extra skinks just for bodies and whatnot, and uh, pressing forward with as much as you can. So you should be able to put quite a bit of damage on target between both units of skinks and your teleport and salamander. Um, and clog up the board big time. So, uh, what are, are y'all running with skinks? You running? You running? You living dangerously? Are you doing bolt spitters and clubs? Are you going melee, or uh, are you going the standard spitters and and, and shields like uh, like I am? It's I'm guessing that's how everybody's running them because that's how we have them built from the last one. Uh, but one of these days, I want to I want to try the tank. Uh, Skink list. I just need to put the the star seer on the table and surprise it, surprise your opponent with a three up save skink horde. <laughs> All right, guys. Till next time. Y'all have a good one.